Hi everybody, and this is Isabel, Isabel Gabori, uh, for our live session. Uh, today's live session of a fire paint with me. And I'm super excited today. You see, today I'm not wearing my, uh, my uh, grubby apron because today um, I have a guest. Um, uh, a good friend of mine, her name is uh, Neve O'Connor. She's an Irish visual artist and she also works with Encastic. Uh, she basically uh, describes herself as a, a visual artist, mixed media artist with a passion for um, Encastic. So I'm just waiting for her now to turn up and invite her. Now it's all new, I've never done this before, the whole split screen. So um, Hopefully it's gonna work. Um, uh, Neve's work is very, very different than mine. Uh, she works with Monotype and she also uh, work with Encaustic uh, as a 3D, okay, as a sculpture, something which I've discovered myself very recently and totally fallen in love with. So basically just waiting for her to arrive. So there might be a little bit now. I don't think there's anybody yet watching us. So I'm here very early because I'm so bloody excited. <laughs> That's basically what is going on. Um, so just waiting uh, for Neve to arrive. Uh, just uh, as usual um, for when we do the Facebook Live, um, you can please do ask a question now i know Neve is super chatty she's as chatty as i am so i'm expecting uh, the best and the worst <laughs> we're gonna try to keep it for half an hour what's that coffee we're gonna try to keep it for half an hour uh however we might overlap uh, we'll see how it goes but i'm keeping uh, a tight rein on the um, on the on the timing because i don't want to take too much of your time um uh, she is not here, so I don't know what is going on. Facebook. Um, ah, somebody in Neve is watching. Okay. I Neve. Okay, I'm going to try to see if I can they receive an invite. They will. Okay, I'm inviting you. I think it, it's a adding technology. Good light, which is good. Aye! Hey, sweetheart, how are you? My God, it's working. Hello. Pardon? It's working. I was like, oh my God, it's like I'm pressing buttons. I know. <laughs> <laughs> I had I had a smidge of worry. I was thinking, am I doing this right? Am I doing this right? How are you? I'm not too bad. I'm having coffee. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. Yes, yeah, same. Very large bucket of coffee. <laughs> oh my god, you have a bucket. Now that's my third cup have today, a bucket. So I would have it intravenously, but they won't let me. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? This mm. is what I've been saying for years. <laughs> it's okay. my last vice, Isabel. My last vice. <laughs> mm -hmm. Well, well, we need to have one at least, you know what I mean? It's yeah, at least one. <laughs> at least one. <laughs> Okay, so I'm waiting. I, I can see now. I don't know if you can see how many people are watching us, but you know, it doesn't really matter. We're going to keep going because um, hello, it's five past. Hello and, from uh, Monaghan. Hello. Yeah. <laughs> hello, yeah. from, hello from Whitegate in Clare. <laughs> Yay! Talk about think, different sites. Like... Yeah, I would say there's about three hours drive, would it be? Well, yeah. We haven't met. yeah, yeah, yeah. We haven't met physically yet, but I would say... No, yeah. I am so looking forward to that. It's going to be good fun. It's going to be good fun. I think we're going to need three days. Yeah. <laughs> I'm game if you are. Why not? God, do you know, it's, it's like I said to you before, though. It's like when you and I and Rosemary and people get on together... Yeah. It's like you speak, it's like you found your fellow alien who speaks your language. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. It's I mean, fabulous. It was great for everybody. Like we're having a little chat. Everybody can join yeah. in, obviously. But, oh, hi, uh, hi, people. Sorry. 
I have to remember people are watching. <laughs> Rosemary is also uh, an acoustic artist and she actually lives only yeah. an hour away from me. Uh, she's also very yeah. different in her work. We have kind of a very. similar approach, but you know, we, we, you know, we work differently. And uh, there's not that many acoustic artists that I know of anyway in Ireland myself. So it's so lovely when we get her up. And as you said, we have this secret language, you know? <laughs> yeah, it's true. It is true. And, it's, 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 um, and we can go to shorthand. We don't have to explain anything. We go straight to shorthand and it's lovely. It's so refreshing. But anyway. Brilliant. Okay, let's get cracking because we have a few okay, people here. Go for okay. it. So as I was saying earlier, but nobody was in, I was talking to myself. I'm going to repeat very quickly. Um, obviously people, and I hope people are going to ask us questions, right? And I can't oh, see so. any yeah. conversation for some bizarre reasons. Uh, yeah, but if you see them yourself. I can see. I can see a little thing here. Sorry, till I lean right in and you get right up my nostrils. I can lean in here a little bit and see that certain people are watching. Morning, Leslie. Morning, Noel. Morning, Horace. Morning, Eden. Hi. <laughs> Brilliant, because I can't see anything. So if you see any questions, um, just write them down. Uh, if I see them, uh, I write them on myself. And we try to okay. reply to them um, as we go along. Otherwise, we will go back after, yeah? And, uh, no just problem, no blah, blah, blah. problem. It's yeah, totally organic. To. Brilliant, okay, love so to. we've got a few people. So, now. Excellent. Okay. I'm caffeinating, go with the first question. Oh, yeah, don't mention, <laughs> don't mention. It's gonna be us getting hey. coffee for the next half an hour. But anyway. Uh, Okay, Hon, the first thing I wanted to ask you, obviously, the obvious yeah. question, can you please introduce yourself? Basically, <sighs> what's your background? Describe your practice a little bit. Just tell people I, who you are and what you do and how do you do it? Very, very, very happily to do that. Very happy to do that. Um, I have a very varied background. I'm very late to my art career in my life. If you know, I'm a late to life artist, as I like to say to people. Um. <laughs> I had I had wanted to be an artist from the time I was four and um, through my schooling, especially after my junior cert, so fifth and sixth year and into like post leaving search and stuff, I was very much gearing towards going to art college. And unfortunately, I was hit with an illness when I was 18 and I spent the best part of about three years trying to get over that. So when I was well enough to kind of consider it all again, I thought, well, actually, you know, I'm just going to get a job for a while and put it on the back burner. Yeah. And so I did that. But the back burner ended up being a very, very, very long time. And I worked in administration for years and years. I worked for wow. solicitors, I worked for medical negligence. I worked in some of the big tribunals in Dublin. I worked in, in conveyancing. And I also did then when we moved, to, I moved away with my husband, who was then my boyfriend slash fiance. Um, and we lived in France. We lived in your part of the world for a few years. And we lived in England. And I was working with the sales and marketing team over there, a management consultancy company. So I have a lot of administration background. Wow. Um, um, when we returned to Monaghan in 2000, I was working here, but actually my home life was a much kind of more steady nine to five or working evenings and weekends to ourselves. And I started painting and dabbling and bits and bobs again. Yeah. Um, and that was kind of my reintroduction to my own creative practice, if you like. Um, and I found encaustic completely by mistake. <laughs> it was the best accident ever happened to me, right? I was... Um, I was making a paper rose wreath and I had these beautiful vintage papers and I didn't want to put acrylic medium on them because they were vintage papers and I wanted to preserve them in their natural, you know, I'm a bit of a material nut like and I, and I didn't really identify that that was such a strong thing in me earlier. You're going to have to yeah. shut me up. You'll never get to half an hour. I'll be no, no, it's your time. Time to shine. Go for um, it. So I had seen a florist dip a rose, a real rose into wax to preserve it. And I thought, oh, I'll preserve the papers with wax. That's a lovely idea. It'll stiffen them. It'll be translucent. It'll be gorgeous. Um, and I looked up wax for art and craft. Yeah. And I discovered encaustic. And what I, what I came across was a little encaustic, a European encaustic kit, which is very much the ironing. Um, it's obviously way sunnier in Claire. Look at you. You're all lit. I look like I'm in a grey hole. <laughs> um, I've got spotlights. I've got spotlights. <laughs> Yeah, uh, until I fall off my chair as well. The um, 
Yeah, so I discovered the European encaustic setup and I bought myself a little kit of that online. And within about five or six months, it's very apparent to me that that was wonderful. I really enjoyed it. That was a great way. I really lost myself in that. Yeah. But that I wanted more and I wanted more and I wanted more. And that's how I really got into encaustic. And then, you know, through Google University and any books I could get. And like I'm talking about 2000, 2001, there really wasn't very many materials. Um, was it before the internet that... even? Pardon? Was it even before the internet? No, no, not just quite, not just quite, but the, um, the uh, Joanne Matera's book came out in 2000, 2001. And it was only about two or three years even after that that I managed to get a copy of it. So, yeah. and that for me was the first real, hi Joanne, if you're in, in the wide world, um, <laughs> the world wide web, um, that for me was the first real grounding of good, solid information where I felt here's an authority on the subject yeah. and that I should refer to that. And I did. And then um, through that, I started discovering places like ORNF and Richard Furness and people like that. And I started to use them as resources for learning. So that's I'm very self-taught in that regard. I'm late to life artist and um, it has become an out and out obsession. Like it is just taken over. And now I've, been a, I've been a professional artist for the last few years, you know, and uh, I've been teaching a lot. I tend, unlike yourself, I tend to teach the um, the European method, which is the iron on the card, but I do it more so be for, for a whole host of reasons. Yeah. Not least when I started out, they were financial. But I do have a lead through from those classes of people who come to the studio in small groups of ones and twos. And then I would teach them, you know, the 101s of encaustic, as we refer yeah. to beginners, proper encaustic. You know, well, American encaustic is how I differentiate between the two, you know? Yeah, but it's wonderful because, you know, I mean, I mean, I am exactly like you, you know, when I mean, yeah. I did encaustic in college, but literally, yeah. it was really breezing through. And it's only a few years ago as well, I discovered it. And same thing, it took me like yeah. crazy, you know, I was yeah. crazy and I still am about it. But the resources, you know, isn't it so just the ultimate? <gasps> sorry, I don't mean to cut across you. I'm no, very happy, no. bad for doing that, but it's enthusiasm. It's not meant to no, be rude. No, 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 don't there is, um, I think, and like I call myself a mixed media artist because yeah. I do use other medium as well. Yeah. But when it comes down to if this, if I was going to, you know, if if the end of the world was going to happen tomorrow and I had to leave and move to an island and I could only bring one media with me, I'd bring encaustic because yeah. you can do everything. Yeah. with encaustic if you know how you yeah. know everything yeah yeah no no no. <laughs> no no it's brilliant no no hey keep going keep going yeah. i love listening to you when we chat it's like okay we chat for two minutes i've got somewhere to go and then you just keep going you know but no um, it's terrible <laughs> now something something that i don't do and that you do in your work and something i would love to uh, to learn or apply you know but yeah i can't do everything all right is uh monotype Oh yeah. Can you describe a little bit what is monotype? Because I mean people so mono come here to listen. Yeah. Okay. So monotype is uh monotype monoprint is probably more of a, a, a term that's familiar probably with more people. Okay. It is a printmaking process, yeah. but it is a very painterly printmaking process. So rather than being um, a reduction print or anything like that, what yeah. you're doing, you know, it's not a lino. You're not carving into, 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 uh... <sighs> so early. You're not carving <laughs> into, you're not carving into a line to make an impression with ink later. So with a monotype, what I do, um, and I make a lot of my own um, encaustic paint yeah. medium for monotype myself. Um, and what I do is I will, on a hot palette, which will have an uh, anodized aluminium plate on it. Um, and there's reasons for that that are very technical. And I can explain all again, if you'd like. Go, but technical, I will... go for it. Pardon? Technical is good. Go for it. <laughs> technical, well... Uh, a lot of a lot of the a lot of the palettes that we use, they are either glass or they are like a Teflon coated thing. Yeah. And when you put wax onto that, it actually pools away. Yeah. But if you use an anodized aluminium, it will hold the form with which the medium is laid on. Okay. And so really? therefore, and with with temperature regulation, then I mean it's something you have to be aware of. Yeah. Um, you can then you can draw on your plate. You can you can remove elements. You can add elements. You know, it's something you can build up in layers, and you will then on the molten wax that's being held on the plate you will place your papers and you will hand pull 
a monotype. A monotype is something that is a one-off. Yeah, one-off. A monoprint is a print that has that is made in the monotype fashion, but will have a repeatable element to it. Oh. And that's the big difference between the two, as per my understanding. So, and I don't really do mono print, although I have been to a fantastic workshop with David okay. Ajax, who is the master in the States. Um, I was in the States, been in the States a couple of times the last few years. Yeah. And uh, I got a fantastic post-con workshop with him. Um, and he is just, whew, he's the, the guy is cool. He, aside from the fact that he is cool, his yeah. work, oh, fabulous. Wow. And he's wonderful. Um, very generous teacher. So if anybody out there ever gets the opportunity to train under him, I would 100% recommend. You know what you can do when we finish with that, and when I put the put the, the whole thing as a replay, maybe uh, put a link to his workshops. Maybe if people absolutely, you know, absolutely, to the, yeah, yeah, absolutely. I'm mean, writing this down so I don't forget. <laughs> Brilliant. Um, yeah, no very problem. Cool. But he is um, himself. There are a couple of very, very well known, well regarded encaustic print artists who do workshops. David A. Clark is one yeah. and um, Paula, oh my brain. I will okay, get to... Don't worry, oh. don't worry. When he gets back, just bounce down. I wouldn't mind, I'm personal friends with her. I should know her name. Like that's <laughs> just warning. I forgot my mother on. made a name one, so I can't say anything about that. Very quick question oh. about, the, about the monotype or the prints. What kind of paper do you use? Do you use any type of paper or do you have a particular paper you could use for this? I have in the past used all sorts of paper because okay. you know, as, as, as an experiment and learning process you do, my go-to paper really is a Japanese Kozo. Yeah. So it's a very, oh. very fine, translucent paper. Um, I love papers like Kitakata and some of them, but they are really expensive. But yeah. I do use an awful lot of Japanese papers and handmade papers. Yeah. Um, now, that is just my preference. There is, you know, you can use other papers and I would definitely encourage people to experiment. I know there's a whole range of new papers coming in here now from Japan. It's much easier to source them. Yeah. But even even like your own handmade paper, you know, yeah. I mean, there's, you know, there's this huge scope there. And and of course, regular printmakers, you know, traditional, I won't yeah. say regular, but traditional so printmaker paper, paper. Your Fabriano, your Arches, your BFK, that kind of stuff. You can use all of them. All of them. Yeah, because yeah. I've been experimenting a bit in the studio with um, not doing monotype or, or monoprint or anything like that, but literally directly painting onto very, very thick uh, watercolor paper. And it's amazing. Yeah. Beautiful. It is. It's lovely. And it takes a very different form on watercolor paper because watercolor paper is so thick by comparison to the likes of like the papers that I would use, which are much more translucent and much finer. Um, so you get, I think you get more of a kind of, on almost a dispersed yeah. uh, texture finish. Paula Rowland. I'm so, so sorry, Paula. <laughs> Paula Rowland is the queen of the monotype. And if I was to suggest Paula anybody Rowland. for classes, in, and especially in the States, and I know that Paula has uh, CDs available and stuff like that, DVDs, right, so you can learn remotely as well. So I definitely look up those two artists if you're interested in encaustic monotype. Brilliant. Brilliant. And, and me. Come talk to me. Come talk to absolutely. me. Absolutely. <laughs> well, we're going to put the links anyway. Uh, you and I, either way, we work. We work yes, in we will. Workplace. Absolutely. But um, you will put the link for all your workshops and websites and mm. all that stuff. Brilliant, brilliant. brilliant. Um, what did I want to... Um, what is your daily practice? Do you have a daily practice in your work? My you daily might... practice has been very disturbed of late. But when yeah. I haven't just moved from one studio into another, and yeah. when I haven't committed my time all over the shop to other people, my daily practice is kids off to school. I'm a, I'm a mom, I have two boys, um, gorgeous creatures. And um, <laughs> of course. <laughs> when I've had the breakfast and struggled with the dog for half an hour and had to quick tidy up, I'll no, try and get over. <laughs> I'll try and get over. I'll try and get over here. Um, I used to have a very good practice, which I've kind of fallen away from, and I want to get back to. And that was just paper and ink. And when I say paper, I mean waste paper. I was using brown, you know, Amazon wrap that you get in the boxes, and I was yes. like ironing that stuff, flatten it out, and using India ink. And I would have um, an aesthetic writing practice. So, which is like a non-literate, non-literal, literal, sorry, not literate, non-literal um, uh, form of writing, but it's, it's, it's mark making for all yep. intents and purposes. Um, I love text. I love that kind of, uh, 
that kind of graphic, the graphic marks that you get in text. I like that. So it's kind of some of that. It's also part of a journaling process that I do. Um, right. Every now and again, I'll do, every now and again, I'll do some visual journaling. And um, yep. again, if people are interested in visual journaling, it, journaling, if you want to go to a workshop for that in Ireland, in go and see yeah. Amanda Grace, Amanda yeah. Grace and her raw journaling. The girl is awesome. Brilliant. I went to one of hers. I think it was at her first one um, uh, with a couple with a couple of pals that were people that have become pals since. Um, and I would. Uh, and so that's all part of it. And that kind of is all happening while the wax is warming up. Because, you know, it's not an yep. instant. You can't walk in, whip the cap off the paint and go for it. You know, there is, pro it's very process heavy. It's very yep. uh, technically and, and process intensive. You know, it is labor, but it's beautiful yep. labor. And yep. so when everything's kind of warmed up and I've warmed up, That's you know, it. I've had my coffee, I've, I've whatever's in my head is out. Um, I'll switch on some music or I'll put on a podcast and then I'll approach whatever it is I have on the bench that day. Yeah, well, that's, similar, that's, that's... very similar. Yeah, I'm the same. Yeah. I mean, I put my hot plate before I bring my, my daughter to school. By the time she's back, the, the stove is on. But you can't Lovely. start right away. Like, you know, I remember no. um, a lecture very quickly before I get back to you. But I remember a lecture yeah. in college. He was saying, like, when you when you walk around all the studios, you know, most of the time you see artists sitting on their chairs and people will go, Jesus, they don't do anything all day. But yeah. no, I mean, you know, you just spend a lot of time sitting down or me, what I do, I, I clean up or I arrange my colors in, yeah. in, in alphabetical order, almost. like yes. a, I'm very uh, autistic, sorry to use that word, but in my ways, I've got a certain pattern, certain ritual before I actually start yeah. working, which may start two hours after I've been in studio, but this is necessary for me to go into that groove, into yeah. that flow. It's so important, you know? You can't... It is. And you can't go because nope. you live the mundane outside and you have a busy life. Yeah. You leave it out, get in, yeah. get these little steps that brings you into that moment when you will apply wax to paper. So if it's journaling, if it is cleaning your studio, whatever it is, you know, I think it's mm. so important. It's so important. No, no, brilliant. It mm. is. It is because you need to decompartmentalize your life from your studio. Yeah. And for a long time, I had a studio at home. And where I did feel that the better work I produced was in the studio at home, I struggled to be in the studio at home. Yeah. And so I took a, and, and I, I had a big installation piece I was doing back in, 20, for a show I did in 2015. And I took um, a space in the Monaghan Artists Collective Studios, yeah. which was here in County Monaghan. And it was in um, the, old, the old Victorian post office in Clovis, a spectacular building. Lovely big space. Real old lady in need of a facelift, which she is currently getting, which is why we're out of it again. So I'm home again. Yeah. I've just moved home. Um, but what I find is I think my work, the work I produce at home is better. But trying to find that headspace, that physical space and the headspace and trying to be able to be dedicated to that with everything else that's going on. Yeah. Um, and then I have some health things as well, so that plays into that yeah. as well. We're gonna come um, to that, now, yeah. that is that is hard. That is hard, and that is the practice. The practice is some days it's just getting into the studio. I, I mean, know. if you're just in there and you empty a bin and you open a window, congratulations, because sometimes just getting there is the hardest. Part. <laughs> it is. It is. No, absolutely. Yeah. Jesus, it is. understand that. Yeah. It's like, you know, one of my main trouble is like people, because I'm working at home, I mean, my studio is in the garden, which has have this separation. Same, exactly like you, we're very similar. Exactly like right? me, yeah. When I, my studio was in the house, it, there was always, oh, geez, I'm not ironing because I don't iron. But, um, oh, my God, I need to empty the dishwasher or blah. And now that physical separation that I need to move yeah. in the garden, yeah. I've got everything with me. I'm not going back in the house unless yeah. it's three o'clock when I've got to go into school run and become a mom again. But... I need that separation. Otherwise, yeah, yeah, it's just, it's just, you can't detach yourself. And, and I do think it's really important to have people around you on side and to understand that this is, when we say practice, it's yeah. work. Yeah. It is work. It might not be nine to five. We might not have a direct employer. You know, we might not be like PAYE workers, but it is work and you need a headspace for that. And it is skilled work and you yeah. need to be, in the zone to create you know yeah. and you know yeah. i mean you know yourself because i know you're gonna you're not gonna empathize with that is like for me it's that routine you know uh they were yeah. on monday to friday i do monday to friday you know uh, yeah. then workshops on saturday but it's like monday is kind of go back tuesday by wednesday that's when 
I'm really starting to get in that flow because I've yeah. been there for three days, you know, and then Thursday and Friday, that's when I'm like, yeah, producing work. Yeah. And, you know, and what then- I found is for me, what was an absolute revelation was to go on a residency because yeah. like you, I'm a mom. So like you, my day is divvied up. You know, I have, you know, I was joking yesterday saying, you know, apparently I'm contractually obliged to, have to go home and feed these children, you know, but it is, <laughs> it is a little bit like that. Right. I've got, okay. I've got mum hat on. I've got, you know, what have you come in? I've got to do this work. I've got to ring this, these people, blah, 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 blah. Um, and I think, uh, yeah, for me, the revelation of going on a residency was something else because I had uninterrupted time. And I've got to be honest, I <laughs> really struggled with it. I really, like I literally, I even joke I had a bit of a mini breakdown because I was like, oh my God, I've got all this time, you know? But it's amazing how quickly you get back into that kind of flow state if you have a longer period of time to work. And when you're cutting your day off at two o'clock or four o'clock or whatever way it might be to to, to um, pick up the kids, it's hard to get back into that, Big time. you know? Big yeah. time. Big time. Yeah. No, but uh, still we're doing it though. Still we're doing it. We're doing it. We're doing it. We're doing it. A lot of people doing it and it's a struggle for everybody. Like the holidays and all of that has been mental. Oh, I know. Anyway, I want to ask you yeah. more questions about your work. Sure. Um, in your, I'm going to read my notes because you know I made notes. Would you believe that? Yeah. Um, now I was, I was, uh, I had, I had a big snoop onto your website, which is amazing, by the way. It's beautiful. Absolutely. Thank you. The work is incredible. Thank I absolutely love it. Um, thank you. I discovered a lot of things about you, which, you know, I didn't know about, which was brilliant. But, um, I was reading a lot about, you know, your, your work and your CV and so on and so forth. And your last show, um, Eden Out Loud. Yeah. Eden Out Loud. It yeah. was Eden last out. Year, Let's move it? this a little bit, Pesh, because you're... Okay, sorry. There you go. Yeah. And yeah. Um, you mentioned basically uh, Eden Hillness, okay? Yes. Um, and basically, uh, when we talked about uh, what, a couple of days ago, we talked together about, you know, what, you know, knowing a bit more about each other and so on and so forth. Yeah. Uh, you said that your work is about overcoming hurdle, uh, body interference yeah. and loss of identity. Now, my question yeah. is actually twofold. Okay. Okay. First of all, the first part is how do you cope with uh, Eden illness? And if you yeah. want to talk about it, uh, what is the illness? That's fine. If you don't have to go into details, sure. whatever you choose. Yeah. But how do you cope with this? And then secondly, is how do you? And because you are integrating it in your your work, yeah. how does it inspire? How does it transpire in your work? Mm. Yeah, that's, they're they're both excellent questions. And um, I think I referred earlier. I was I was ill when I was younger. I had an autoimmune yeah. blood disorder, um, and I had my spleen removed. So I've kind of been immune impaired for for most of my adult life. And um, in more recent years, I have had a recurrence of other autoimmune conditions that that has given me. Uh, Unfortunately, it's left me with secondary fibromyalgia and chronic fatigue. Okay. So I really really struggle with pain and I struggle with energy management okay. now I would say this time last year I was in a much worse place I'm a lot stronger this year and you know week by week and month by month there are changes and there's medication changes and all of that has to be factored into life as well okay. I have become except for this week funnily hence the bags under the eyes but I've become oh, um, very good at drawing back from situations I don't need to be involved in I've become very good at not committing my time to all and sundry because I'm I am a bubbly outgoing 100 miles an hour kind of person I always have been but it's been very difficult for me to learn that actually I can't do that anymore so I've had to learn to prioritize you know my family and my my um my arts career there they are my priorities and outside of that then it's family and friends and if I can do things within the community, I will, but I do have to manage my time. Uh, it, it has its hurdles. I'm not going to lie. It's not always easy. Um, I try to keep my uh, studio environment as free of toxins and things as I can. I, I'm not into using solvents. I'm quite a puritan when it comes to the type of waxes and stuff I use. Yeah. Um, part because materiality is really important to me, but then the other part of that is also I don't want to be kind of you know, causing myself any further, you know, complications yep. with health. 
And um, how it all changed, interestingly, last January 2017, I went, I, I, I got a residency in Tyrone Guthrie Centre, which is a fantastic place. If you ever get a chance to go, it's here in Monaghan, it's stunning. And, um, and I had a week there and I went with a, like a suitcase full of intentions. Oh, I'm going to try this and I'm going to have time to do that. And I'm going to try this new medium I've never tried and blah, blah, blah. <laughs> and I got there and I went into the studio on the first day. And by that night, I had a bit of a mini breakdown because I, I and I'm, I'm, I'm being very dramatic i'm prone i am prone to be very dramatic um <laughs> there is a i kind of realized that i was trying to force myself to feel a way or be a way that i wasn't feeling and i wasn't being and without the distractions of my normal day i actually could hear the stuff i was trying to always push away and so it was almost like a therapy it was unbelievable it was almost like a therapy way. and so I thought you know what I have to change my approach to this week and I just have to take it as it comes and I'm just going to produce whatever I produce and I'm, let it be and I need this this is a therapy and so I did that and I produced an awful lot of what I would consider much quieter than my usual style work in terms of color palette and things like that yeah. uh, work a lot of it was the monotype um, all of it is work that has found its way into the Hidden Out Loud solo that okay. I had last year. But it wasn't until about, I was having that show in in September, the end of September. I was showing it in the Solace Art Gallery in Leitrim and I had been booked to have a solo. And it wasn't until perhaps around the June that I thought the work I'm doing for the solo is not resonating with me at all. It's just me producing wow. work. There was no me in it. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. And I thought that's it. It's big girl pants time. Just do it. Just Nike. Do it. Like. And so I decided I was going to embrace the fact that I was doing work that was for me a, a sort of therapy about hidden illness, about the hidden illness community. I had all these new friends. We call ourselves spoonies, you know. Um, and yeah. Uh, this kind of stuff was going on in the background and I just thought no I'm just going to embrace it I'm just going to be honest because I actually personally know a lot of people with hidden illness yeah. and I know that it isn't discussed and it isn't talked about no. so in, in one instance it was therapy for me and in another instance it's opening out that conversation you know yeah, and that work, I'm that. still continuing yeah. with that line of work really you know what you mean yeah 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 so that's 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 all the hidden stuff wow. <laughs> out loud. <laughs> yeah, I found. But you, you get the title, you know? Brilliant. That's great. Yeah. That's yeah. Brilliant. I don't know. Do you see if we, do we have any questions or anything? I don't, I don't see anything. Specific. I don't see questions. Questions are welcome, folks, if you have Come any on, questions. <laughs> Bring them on board. Okay, who have we got? Claire. Hi, Claire. <laughs> hi. Oh, hi. Hi, Soxy. Hi, Russell. Are you well? Ros Roscoe's my cause. Hi, cause. Oh, hi, Pamela. I actually met Pamela whilst I was on residency. She's a wonderful artist. Hi, Michael. Hello. Hi, John. I don't know. Hi, John. I don't know you, John. Do I know you, John? Stephanie. Hi, Stephanie. Hi, and Brona. Paula hi, Paula and Jacqueline here. I only see a, a couple of names. I don't know what's going on there, but at least we're, we're, we are. Um, actually, you know what? I want to go back to something that you mentioned earlier. Um, yeah. Uh, about um, because that's something we we talked about a couple of weeks ago uh, mm. when I did the last Facebook live and about the importance of good materials. Oh yeah, and you is. know, uh, I mean that's something I'm I'm the same. I, I mean this is the reason why I'm doing encaustic. I mean maybe we have different way different reasons, but for me yeah. it's for me they're very sacred. You know there's something the materials I respect. You know like I love the beeswax. Yeah. I love the facts created by the bees. For me it's the circle of life mm -hmm. and so on and so forth. It's a very sacred yeah. item. It is. Plus the damar, the resin. You know the smell is essential. Um, element to it because my work is very yeah no my work is is, is, is different that way it's, it's about that flow that yeah. sensuality um, yeah. but would you tell me why is it so important for you because some people just go and get beeswax that is like one percent beeswax and whatever else but is being put into it there's a couple uh, of issues there there is a couple yeah. of issues there to yeah. get genuine beeswax yeah. in the commercial marketplace is actually difficult. It's difficult to source. You will often find plenty of places on the website, and you and I have discussed this before, and I was stung yeah. by this back in back a little while back, um, where you see stuff on the internet and it says 100% beeswax. 
But actually, when you go into the fine detail and you really look at where that wax is sourced and how much of it is beeswax, you're talking about like maybe only 5% of the total product is actual beeswax. Now, in terms of encaustic, you don't know what that is. That may not be a stable material for you to yeah. produce encaustic medium with. So you have to stay clear. You have to know your sources. You have to know your the purity of your product. Um, I, I always bang on about materiality is very important to me. Yeah. Because I see beeswax as such a pure product. Yeah. That it has this virtue. It's 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 pure, That's it's it. natural. And it's a word I like to use and I've often used, especially because I in I made a number of vessels for a show I did in twenty fifteen called A Ballast Full of Hope, and it was about the yeah. transportation of female famine orphans from the workhouses here in Ireland to Australia. And I wanted to represent those girls in a very innocent way, because young girls are, young yeah. boys are, children are, they're innocent. And so for me, in that instance, I used pure beeswax. And the reason I used pure beeswax, which people may argue is not encaustic, you know, that's fine. Um, but I use pure well, beeswax. Bit, stay away but from you, those politics. I want to stay away from that conversation. I use pure okay. beeswax to, and actually, bear with me, I'll get one and show you. No, that's fine. I use pure beeswax to produce. Beautiful. 200 different shape bowls and the reason I did it is because I see the material as being unsullied yeah it is pure yeah. like like a baby like a child um it is transparent like most you know semi-transparent like most young people are you can usually see right through what they're at or what they're doing um and it is delicate and it is yeah. fragile and it is easily damaged yeah. and so in that sense that's why i use these no that's good the materiality and the metaphor the other thing i'll say about beeswax is because an awful lot of the work that i was doing was concerned with almost memorial type work that you yes. know beeswax is a natural preservative so in all yeah. of my work i feel as if i'm preserving ideas and i'm preserving yeah. notions of preserving thought and energy encapsulated within the essence Absolutely. of wax so that's yeah. why i use that's why i'm Think wax is important i also think that there is a whole load of people out there and we've maybe you know i have to admit in the very early days i might have done it myself and it's something i bang on all the time about in my classes is that a lot of people think that crayons are the same as encaustic and they oh. are not no. and what i will say about that is if you think about it never mind the quality of the pigment is poorer never mind you it's don't the know stuff what that's adding to being it. used Crayons are advertised as non-toxic in their solid form. When yeah. you heat them, you have no idea what kind of fumes it's... are coming into the environment. So if you look at it from a health perspective, I wouldn't go there. If you look at, 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 at the kind of waxes you use in terms of stability for your work, which if you understand the techniques and, and the importance yeah. of all of that when you're working in encaustic, you will not go near anything that is is not you know exactly what you can control and you know. and archivalness is important you Absolutely. want your work to last encaustic is one of the oldest living art materials yeah. known to man there is we all know the his well anybody who's into encaustic knows the history yeah. of encaustic we know there are 600 fire mummy portraits out in the wild world yeah. you know that are that are generations old and have survived beautifully because yeah. They were entombed away from sunlight, like all fine art should be. <laughs> away from direct sunlight, away from direct heat sources. Wax is a natural preservative. Yeah. Wax is moisture resistant. I can go on and on and on, Isabel. I know I'm speaking to the choir with you, but it's so important. And in the encaustic no, community, no, it is particularly, the, yeah, particularly like the 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 encaustic um, international group that would be uh, in attendance at the conferences and things like that. We're all about raising the bar. Materials need to be pure, you know, yeah. um, um, intention in the work. Drippy, drippy is not always going to win. You know, there has to be intention there. There has to be quality in the materials. There has to be archivalness. And yeah. there has to be a standard of professionalism within the fine art community about encaustic and what encaustic is. So I'm a bit of a pain in the bum about that. So, um, yeah. There no, you go. no. My I mean, spiel. you know, I'm exactly, I'm exactly the same. I'm exactly the same. You know, it's like yeah. it has to be. And listen, yeah. I wanted to ask: Do you put it? Did you put any damar resin into your vessels? Not into Am the bowl. Am I bowls. losing you? 
into the bowls and the orbs that were meant to represent the girls that's just these wax. So yeah. they really are super fragile. They bloom, you know, no, uh, unsaturated yeah. Yeah. hydrocarbon in beeswax. And it's one of the reasons we add DeMarc to it, because it actually, there is um, saturated yeah. uh, hydrocarbons in the DeMar. Yeah. And what the DeMar does is it kind of balances that out yeah. with beeswax. So as well as making it harder, as yeah. well as adding to the luster of the beeswax, as well as upping the temperature control, it also, um, yeah. it adds strength and it helps with the bloom. So these bloom, yes. you know, these have these have good days and bad days. Yeah. You know, they're very, to me, I just see them as... as just give them a little shine. People. Give them a little shine. Pardon? They shine and they you don't shine, you know? Shine. I can do. Sometimes I do, yeah, sometimes I don't. I mean, I've shown the work two or three times, this particular piece. And you'll see this particular piece on my website. It's called Bed and Breakfast, the final yes, piece. Yes, I saw that. I yeah. yeah, I reproduced... Um, I reproduced um, a workhouse bed platform there's one in castle in carrick mccross here there's a workshop that or uh, workhouse that was um the girls dormitory yeah. was renovated um very sympathetically and um i recreated one of the bed platforms to sit the 200 that goes on and there's a whole story Beautiful. to that a whole back history and there's a lot of research oh, went into that but it's it's that it's the materiality you know, and people will argue that's not encaustic, but there was other elements in the show that was encaustic as in a wax and a resin, which is, you know, what we what we identify as encaustic medium. Yeah. 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 And uh, very quickly, uh, before I let you go, because uh, we've been on for 40 minutes already. Which I know. Is I feel like um, 10 minutes. I know. It goes, <laughs> it goes so fast. It goes so fast. Is my phone saying low battery for some bizarre reason? It's plugged. Oh crap, we might get caught. Um, do you, I don't know what's going on there because it's plugged. I don't know. Maybe it's because we're live. Um, do you Maybe. use p pure pigment or do you use uh, pigment sticks? Yes, I do. I use pure, a little bit of everything. When I'm making, um, when I'm making my own paints, I will use encaustic medium and powdered pigment. Um, obviously, I use yep. a mask and I'm careful about that. Um, I have yep. used oil paint in the past. Uh, to me, it gives a very yep. different end result. Sometimes I like that, sometimes I don't. Yep. Um, I love an oil stick. I just love an oil stick. And even oil paint on the yep. surface to stain. I like oil paint to stain, right? Yep. Um, so, yeah, I've used all of those things. I've used all of those things. It depends. It depends. You know, it depends on the final outcome and what I'm after. That's it. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. Okay, darling. I'm gonna have to let you go. But you listen. Um, I listen. I hope. I hope this has been some highlight to people. I hope they. Uh, I hope they found it interesting, Absolutely. and I haven't just waffled on about the things I'm concerned about too much. Um, I'm really. Thanks for asking me. It's been fun. I'm gonna finish my coffee. Are you kidding me. No, that's brilliant. That's brilliant. Uh, Absolutely uh, lovely. And if people have questions afterwards, they can put them in the in the little comment link and we'll go back and all yes, that. Yes, do. Because you and I can follow the link and answer any questions people might have. And what I'll do as well is I will put links to those three other artists that I mentioned earlier. Um, under this, once you've posted yep, it out there. And um, yep. yeah, thanks so much. Thanks, thanks for having me. So <laughs> Oh, you're so welcome. And it's lovely. Listen, have a good week. It's lovely to see you. And you, darling. Brilliant. And thanks to everyone. And it that worked. Watched. It worked. I know. Who good. knew? I didn't think it would work, but well done. Well, that well, I didn't think. I know the experience of it. So, well done. <laughs> okay. <laughs> listen, take care. Bye, thanks everybody. so much. Thank you so much. Bye, Dave. And thank you for Bye, everybody. Darling. And I'll talk to you very soon. And if you have any other questions, just add them on the comment link. I'm going to put a replay now, okay? You have a good weekend, okay. hon, and we we'll see each other very soon, okay, my lovely? Yes, I hope Bye. to. Bye, lovely. Bye, everyone. Bye, Bye, Bye. 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 Bye